This is the future. Before we get into another Warframe guide, I would like to talk about one topic that has been asked by my community several times this month. You rarely see me do this type of content on this channel, but I think it's a topic that we shouldn't turn a blind eye because honestly, if we do, then it will just lead to lots of misconception, misinformation, and probable negativity in the Warframe community. So, I know most of you know Tencent, that giant gaming company, accused by gamers of putting some of the most insane microtransactions in their game. They may not be the ones that created pay to win, but if you asked gamers about this, then some will surely tell you about Tencent games. So why you should be concerned? Well, if you didn't know yet, Tencent brought Leo which is the company that Digital Extremes are working for. This means that Warframe is now owned by Tencent, which means that we are now playing a Tencent game. Before even Tencent sealed the deal of owning Warframe, the community was already speculating on the chaos that the company will bring to the game. Many players in the Warframe community feel like it will be the inevitable end for this long time running free to play Space Ninja game. When they did acquire Warframe, it almost felt like the Doom Slayer landed on a demon planet, that all the community can say is about chaos and destruction about the game. And every single time that there's a change in the market, the community reacts that somehow, this is the influence of Tencent owning Warframe. While Digital Extremes said that they will continue what they are doing, and the company will have no influence in development, still, the community is not convinced that Tencent will have no influence over their decisions. I mean, they are your boss, and it's either do it or get fired right? Before we delve deeper, I would like to share one of the most amazing things I used in my daily life right now. This is Exter, the wallet of the future. This is not your ordinary wallet, as it got quick access to all your cards. An RFID protection feature which secures your identity, money, and cards. It also comes with a key tracker which allows you to locate your wallet worldwide. It's also voice activated and it's easy to set up using the Chipolo app. And the best part is, the key tracker is solar powered. Two hours of sunlight gives your tracker two months of charge. What I really love about Hexter is that you get what is advertised in the video. I got mine, and I've been using this for weeks now, and honestly, I love and will never replace this wallet again. Its sleek and elegant design are the things I like first about this futuristic wallet. And after using it for a while now, I honestly can say that this is the perfect wallet for me. Now I don't have to look for my wallet as I can easily track it with one click of a button on my mobile device. I also don't have to worry about someone skimming my cards. And most importantly, I don't have to worry about bulky wallets in my butt. If you want to get this amazing wallet, then kindly use the link I have provided in the video your description and as well as the pinned comment. Go get the best wallet in the market right now. Secure your money with style, and join the thousands of people who are now using Exter. The link is at the video description and pinned comment. Thank you all for your support. Now let's get back to the video. The suspicion of the community heightens when digital extremes start dropping stuff in the market, disturbing the force that was once in a long slumber. First were the Lunar Event and those bundles that are disguised with cute cavats that I sometimes imagine saying go spend your money on me. I got Kuva, Ravens, and more which is surely a better deal than that scam avoid trader of yours. Players actually made this a big deal, and some even said that this is the beginning of the end of Warframe. And then, comes the Railjack update. First, Digital Extremes decided to make Railjack available in the market. Yes, the same Railjack wherein we spent so much time building during the Rising Tide update is now in the market, and you can pay with Platinum to get a fully built one and start exploring the Proxima regions. And it gets even better by spending 555 platinum you get four crew members the new nautilus sentinel and a fully built rail jack players go nuts about this but they go bananas when they heard about endo being sold in the market right now i know this is not new to veterans since i heard before the silver grove update that digital extremes were selling fusion cores in the market which was then replaced by endo but the fact that it's now back triggered people in the warframe community from now on you can skip the endo grind and just buy 1000 endo for 50 platinum. If that's not tempting, then you can always check out essential endo bundles where you get not only 1000 endo, but also some credits and basically important mods for newbies or those who just started playing Warframe. But squad leader, you showed how to farm endo fast recently, and also, those mods bundled in the essential are easy to get and also, you can also have an unlimited amount of credits by doing either index or the profit taker fight. Yes? 
all of it can be farmed but let me ask you this, do new players know how to get this stuff in the game without watching any Warframe content on YouTube first, or asking the community about it? This is just my honest opinion, but these type of bundles in the market is targeted on the new players so that if they want to skip the grind for this stuff, then they could just always pay up with Platinum. But squad leader, Platinum is not even a real currency and you can also trade it with other players. Question again. Do new players have tons of starting Platinum to buy all this stuff in the market? Probably they will end up wasting their starting Platinum by buying potatoes just like what I did because no one ever told me that I can farm them in some missions. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about those potatoes that you use to increase the modding capacity of your warframes and weapons. I'm talking about those goddamn potatoes called Orokin cells. Yes, I was a victim of war and ended up wasting my precious starter platinum on those things. Call me noob, but I bet some of you have done much worse, you see. Once you started Warframe, you end up loving the cinematics especially right now that Digital Extremes revitalized the Awakening quest line which is basically the starting quest for all Tenos. But once you pass that, you will definitely be clueless and ask yourself what the hell am I doing? You get bombarded with these new quests and objectives and sometimes, you get overwhelmed and confused on what exactly is your main objective in Warframe. Then, there's the progression wherein you get introduced to the complex modding system, but when you get to the point wherein you know exactly how it works, then you will realize that it's not so complex at all but just needs those meta mods to make warframes and weapons good. You will start hating the grind and start pulling the credit card and spending cash on things that you think will help you progress. Which in the first place, all you need to was join a clan and pick up some weapons to breeze the start chart. No one will tell you this if you won't ask and just play the game. So basically squad leader, you are saying that this is a trap for new players? Well, not exactly. What I am saying here is that this type of microtransaction is more towards new players and their progression into the game. And maybe, this is why most of the content of digital extremes are not towards the veterans because, how can you even make money with someone who literally how to bypass all the progression microtransaction in the game? It makes perfect sense that digital extremes more content that new players will enjoy than provide something which will make the old ones stay. I'm not saying that the developer is not doing anything about it, but in my opinion, the game is more for casual gamers and that is why we don't have any endgame content in Warframe. We may post endgame builds in our channel, but there are no endgame challenges that are worthy for these types of builds honestly. So, where am I getting at? You see, this is not the influence of Tencent over Warframe, but this type of thing is actually in the game for quite a while now. You may not have noticed it since you might have a different experience with the game and some peeps pick you up to help you in the progression. Or, you might actually have searched on methods to skip the grind, or ask friends how to do stuff easily without even taking a look at the market. To be honest, you can't feel this type of progression microtransactions in the game if you are well aware of what to do or, you have everything to make your builds and combos complete. The only thing that you will probably be spending is money for your fashion frame. The Warframe community likes to play dress up as this game offers tons of customization for the players to enjoy. Like it or not, games evolved and so does our gamers. You may say that people complain about how hard difficulty is right now, when in our time, we only used one token to finish an arcade game. And mind you, that takes a lot of tokens spent before you can even master one arcade game. If you did it in one go, then you are a pro gamer and your skill are beyond the next level. Things have changed now. Players don't just talk about how good their skills in the game, but they also value their looks in the game. Cosmetics, or how the game and characters look in general are one of the important things that gamers value right now. Like it or not, we are now in the era wherein almost all games look real and gamers value graphics and things that please their eyes. Warframe exploits this by giving players multiple options for customization and then, offering some god tier cosmetics in their paywall. This is one of the best money makers for Warframe and honestly, this is also one of the things that keeps the Warframe relevant. Players always show their sick fashion frame and artists are also doing some crazy good looking Warframe stuff which attracts potential players. This is how the game makes money and believe it or not, I don't think that Tencent has influenced over Digital Extreme's decision yet. This is how Warframe works. It's free to play and what did you expect them to do? Send you over a patron link to ask for donations? We must accept the fact that free to play games will always have microtransactions as this is how they keep the game from running. It may be tagged as free to play 
but we must not forget that people are also working on this game which means they need money for their services. You shouldn't worry about Tencent taking full control of Warframe because, in my opinion, this is the model that the giant company was looking for in the first place. They see Warframe as profitable that is why they bought out Leo. The business model of Warframe is one of the best in the market in my opinion, and this is how they keep the game running for 8 years. It's not like Tencent told Digital Extremes to sell progression stuff in the market or cosmetics to slap in our frames which literally does not do anything in terms of gameplay. This kind of business model is embedded into Warframe before Tencent even arrived at the scene. We should be happy that a big company now owns Warframe because just imagine the things that they can do in the future update with all the assets they have right now or the assets they will acquire in the future. We could expect more about the game's future than being so worried about a thing that is already in the game at the very start. What's the problem if they start doing a mobile version of Warframe? That's their decision as they see it profitable. And if they did it, then Warframe gets more exposure and coverage which means plenty of players, plenty of money, and more years to come playing our favorite game. Do not be so worried about these types of microtransactions because in the end, if you know how to make platinum, then you can always buy them out without pulling that credit card of yours. Progression types of microtransactions are easy to avoid, but cosmetics are just pure evil. They just make you spend those greens without hesitation. So, these are all my thoughts about Warframe becoming a pay to win game, and remember, all the things you have heard in this video are based only on my personal point of view. You may have a different perspective about this topic, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.